like your ass. Hey guys, welcome to the workout video that I promised you guys from the last charity stream. Not the most recent one, but the one before that. I figured it was a good time for me to show you guys some different workouts that you can do at home during this unprecedented social distancing time due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, with that said, all of these exercises um, that I'm going to be doing at least today are going to be entirely body weight based. Um, some of the other things, I'll show you some different lifts and some different things you can do with stuff that you actually have around the house or something really simple that you can order off Amazon for maybe like seven bucks. We're going to start off today with a real simple kind of circuit workout. Um, basically, I, this is generally what I do from home when I work out is doing a bunch of different stuff like this. But today we're gonna to be starting off really simple. Um, this is day one, it's going to be push-ups, it's going to be uh, squats, and it's going to be um, S sit-ups, which is a variation of sit-up that really accentuates all of your abdominals. Um, and I might actually do a little bit of extra stuff because I have a friend of mine who wants me to show them how to do four-way leg exercises. Um, that I learned and have been doing since I had multiple knee surgeries for my meniscus and those repairs. Normally the first thing you like to do is obviously I have a hardwood floor and I also have carpet. The reason I want to talk about this is because doing an exercise on your hardwood floor, uh, especially if you're doing sit-ups and different stuff like that, it does kind of stress your joints. It's good to have some padding down and do some different stuff like that. And I will say a lot of people say, well, why don't you just do it on the carpet or the rug? Well. Do you really want to sweat on your normal everyday rug? I would say not so much. So, easiest thing to do, most people have this, it's just a yoga pad. Um, of course, I'm a tall boy and kind of on the bigger side, so my, my yoga mat is rather long. Um, it's longer than most yoga mats you find, so Definitely do your research and look up what is available to you and base it based off of your size. The majority of people are going to be able to get just a regular yoga mat, but this guy, he's a long boy. So I'll go ahead and put that down. Now, keep in mind as well, um, it's always good to do some sort of cardio, something that warms up your muscles and do stuff like that before you get into these exercises that involve body weight. But um, a lot of times I'll go for a run. There's some different exercises and different things you can do before you get into it so that you're not suddenly jumping into and stressing your muscles. Um, obviously there's passive stretching. Um, there's a certain way to do that to where you get that sort of stretch and that sort of thing on. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of that because I've already warmed up. Setting up all of this stuff inside my apartment, getting the camera ready, messing with lights, messing with audio equipment, shutting doors, cleaning up, all of that stuff. I'm already sweating, as you can tell. And I'm getting the cardio just from talking. And also, very important to note, have water. Water is very important. Um, and don't chug water uh, when you're about to do exercise or during exercise. Um, it's also advised don't like eat a lot right beforehand because it's how your blood flow works. If you eat right before you exercise, your blood flow is going to go to your gut. It's going to go towards the digestive tract and you're gonna have less blood flow to your muscles. So normally, the closest I would eat to working out is about an hour at the, that's the least amount of time you want between when you start your workout and the last time you ate. Um, there are some people that advise some snacks and some other things. Um, some people advise pre-workout. I can't do pre-workout because of other medical conditions. So water, huge, and sip it. A little sip goes a long way. So to start out, we'll do some exercises. Um, since the first exercise we're gonna be doing is your standard push-up, we're gonna just do some arm stretches, which you wanna pull across your body. So arm across the body, other arm up, bend your arm and touch your back. And then hold that. You should feel a stretch in the back of your arm and a little bit in your shoulder. You don't wanna pull it too far like you're pulling your shoulder out of the socket. It's always advised like straight up and just reach reach towards your back so you feel the stretch it should be right along here so and you hold that for a bit as you go kind of pulse it and try and go further don't jump like really into it and really back into it but just like tighten it let it go a little bit tighten it a little more let it go a little bit tighten it a little more so and then we'll go ahead and switch arms 
Exact same thing, arm across, reach into my back, arm up, pushing it in. Again, feeling it in the back of the arm here, and you can also kind of feel it in your pec sometimes. And you just make sure you're breathing. Breathe into it. When you stretch deeper, you should be exhaling, and when you relax a little bit, you inhale. You hold it for about the same amount of time until you get a nice little stretch in. It's just kind of waking up those muscles and getting them ready for what you're about to do. And obviously, we're wearing exercise gear. I mean, you can see I'm wearing workout shoes, gym shorts, and a muscle shirt. This is actually a Nike dry fit, and yes, I am aware my nipples kind of show through it, but get over it. Get over it. <laughs> The other arm stretch easily is over the top, grab the elbow, pushing down to the back. Again, this one you will feel in your tricep. Make sure you're pushing your head back and not tucking all the way in with your neck. You just kind of hold this for a bit. You're reaching to the center of your back right between your shoulder blades with the arm you're holding up. You're pushing back. You'll feel this more towards the shoulder as well as the tricep. And then make sure you release. You extend your arm up before you switch. Do the same thing. The main things here too is you have to recognize the fact that this is this is to help your muscles recover. It's not necessarily something that will help in injury prevention. There's been a lot of different studies about dynamic stretches and stuff like that actually helping in that more regard. But this that's why you kind of make it more dynamic with the relax a little bit and keep going deeper. Next one I'm going to do is very simple. It's just for the legs. Um, just simple knee hugs. If you can balance on your foot, that's great. If you can't, the key components here, you need to make sure and keep your ankle flexed so your toes pointed towards your shin. I also don't know if I'm too close, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. But you want your knee hugged to your chest and you wanna keep your back straight and keep your balance, okay? So if this is hard for you, you can also do this laying on the floor, just like that. Lay back and tuck your knee and pull it in. You wanna keep your other leg flat flat to the floor, but make sure you're flexing your toe towards your shin. That helps keep your knee secure and protected so that you're not um, pulling it. If you jerk it one way to the side or something like that, it's not going to cause issue. You'll feel this stretch both in your quad and if you have tight glutes, you'll feel it in your butt. We'll go ahead and switch. Most people will be doing this on their back. Um, as you'll see, my right knee is nowhere near as flexible as my left. This is the knee I've had surgery on three separate, three, three separate times. I can't adjust my fingers properly. And I'll also do some different stuff to pump this because sometimes my knee likes to try and lock up. Don't curl your back and get close to it. Make sure you're just pulling your knee towards your chest and relax. Don't flex your neck. That's not necessarily good. I'm doing it because I'm trying to talk to you guys. So. Make sure you go back out and relax. Um, those are simple things. A lot of people will do yoga before they do exercises. I definitely like that idea um, because you get that flexibility and it also can work to your advantage for cardio. So those are also some great ideas. Um, the other simple one that I'm gonna do real quick is just your normal toe touch. There are different variants to this that people will recommend over time and different stuff like that. But the obvious one is bend and touch your toes. You'll feel the stretch all the way in the back, your hamstrings down to your calves, into your Achilles, which is the tendon that connects to the back of your heels, if those of you guys don't know anatomy. Again, there's a variant too where you, you tuck and try and hug your legs. That's another way to accentuate it. Um, I personally will vary that occasionally from time to time, but this is important because you get that nice stretch in your hamstrings. It also flexes your calves and stretches your calves as well as your Achilles. Easy, quick warm up. Um, obviously, this is something that I would normally do after a run. Um, I didn't run today. Uh, I, don't, I personally don't like the idea of running in a mask because I sweat a lot and I, it would feel like I was waterboarding after like five minutes. I personally am quite out of shape. So I'm not gonna do necessarily full sets, what I call full sets, which is um, four sets of 25 of each of the exercises and you cycle between the three. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and be easy on my body. This is something you wanna do when you're getting new to working out or haven't worked out in a long time. So I'm actually going to reduce it 
by half. I'm gonna do four sets of 12 of push-ups. I'll probably do four sets of 15 of the squats and I'll do my normal sets of 10 or, and then I'll probably try and do my normal sets of 25 of the sit-ups. I probably won't be able to finish all the sit-ups, but we'll see. Simple things, we'll talk through this as we go. Um, some of the biggest things that people talk about with push-ups is form. Now, not everybody can do a push-up from their feet and in proper position. The, the key things here is form and technique. This is how you prevent from injuries. This is how you get things um, get the most out of your exercise and make sure it's correct. So one of the biggest things a lot of people will do when you do a push-up, so this is a push-up, this is just standard about shoulder width hand placement. My hands will be a little bit outside of my shoulder uh, where my shoulders sit. Um, and I'll get into the push-up position now, but as you'll see, my back is flat. People will do this, People will be down like this. Some people will lift their head. The key thing here is you want your back straight and your body straight and neutral head position. So when you go down, nothing touches without everything touching. See that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and that's proper form. If you can't do proper form on a push-up straight up, it's the knee technique. You just are doing push-ups from your knees. The key thing here, same thing, straight back. You'll see I tuck my knees up. That helps protect my knees from hurting. Some people feel more comfortable with them down. I personally prefer up if I'm doing knee push-ups. It's the same thing. Your angle just changes a little bit, but you wanna keep your back and body straight. So if you can't do push-ups from your feet, you can always do them from your knees, but make sure you get your form right. And make sure you adjust accordingly. If you can only do so many, don't overdo it because then you won't be able to get into the routine. So for some people starting off with like five, starting off with like 10, for me, it's been a while, but I also tend to have pretty sculpted arms or so I'm told. So 12 is a, a pretty good starting point. But the next exercise we'll do is pretty simple as well. It's just your normal squat. Talking a lot while trying to exercise takes a lot out of you. And normally I do these pretty quick. So I'll go straight from doing 12 push-ups to straight into the squats and straight into the other exercise. And I'll show you guys that after this first round, after I'm done explaining it. So, simple thing here, feet about shoulder width apart, you'll see my toes are a little bit pointed outwards, they're not directly facing you, there's a little bit out there, that's a cheat to prevent your knees from going inwards. When you go down into the squat, you don't want your knees coming inwards, that's risking injury to like your ACL, your MCL, and other ligaments. So form here, again, is important. You'll learn... Form and technique is how you make the most out of your exercises. You guys are giving me a cardio workout, geez. There are a lot of different ways to do this. Some like the arm swing, some like to do this. Um, I personally do this a lot, but the key things here, you'll look when I squat down, my back stays straight. So the first thing that bends is my, my hips. I'll show you from the side. But you'll see when I go down, my hips bend first. Butt back. Down, up. You want to stay centered over your feet. Keep your back straight. Generally looking forward, if you look to one side, you'll create imbalances. Um, you can also look up. I just don't recommend moving your head all the way up. But that's also a way to prevent your back from bending over. Last thing you want to do is end up like this. Or, or just rolling your back at all. If this comes as a big factor when you start adding weight if you're doing weighted squats. So when you go down, it's here, back straight up. Don't track, don't completely lock out your knees. You can hurt yourself doing that. Just get to the point where it's comfortable standing. So I'll show you guys face, facing you real quick. 
knees, feet slightly pointed outwards. Again, down, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Simple as that. And then the last exercise, it's the one that you're probably gonna hate me the most for. They're called S sit-ups. Your normal sit-up is this. An S sit-up is different. It combines the movement of the crunch and the movement where you accentuate your lower, lower abdominal muscles. So the reason it's called an S sit-up is if you watch my movement, it's an S. And you have to repeat it on the way down. So the first part of the movement, don't grab your head. Don't put your hands behind your neck. You'll strain your neck. It's not good. If you're going to do stuff with your neck to accentuate, do it without pulling with your hands. You also notice in this one I can't do this, so I just merely touch the side of my head. So the first step is tuck towards your crotch, then elevate up and low down the same way. So to give you a better side view, you tuck to crotch, arch, back down. Tuck, arch, back down. Got it? And you're gonna do, I'm gonna try and do 25. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you notice, I'm controlled on the way up and on the way down. I've been that way on every exercise. That's, again, technique, how you get the most out of your your movements. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, maybe we start with 15, because I'm already feeling the burn. You will feel the burn in all of your abs. Your lower one's probably the least amount, but your middle and uppers will burn pretty hard from doing this. Now, let's go ahead and go through a full cycle workout that I would normally do without necessarily pausing to talk to you guys. Again, look at my form, look at my timing on up and down on the various exercises, and focus on the technique that, you, that I've talked about earlier. Those are the three important things as we go ahead and move forward. Hold on, let me reset this timer real quick. All right, here we go.
That's one round. As you can tell, those S sit-ups are already making me struggle. I got one more set, real quick sip of water, and jump right back into it. Don't forget, if you're over breathing, try and center yourself. Quick sip of water, we'll get through this, and that'll be day one, done. That simple. Let's get it. Make sure afterwards you probably need to consume some liquid protein. I have a lot of different recommendations, but I'll show you guys what I drink. I just have an Ensure high protein shake I take afterwards. Chocolate milk also works great. Just make sure it's not high sugar. Just regular milk also helps. Things that get protein in your system right away helps you avoid the soreness and your muscles recover faster. If you can't finish the set, better because you fail trying. All right. Don't give up. You notice when I took breaks between push-ups, I didn't put my knee down. You gotta keep that weight on your arms. All right, you gotta keep going. You got this. I got this. Woo!
We did it! I'm sweating like crazy. And I'm sure you will be too. Whew. But that's a simple workout in quarantine. Whew. Now let's get to the recovery process. Whew. It's okay to lay flat and catch your breath. But I always recommend standing up or sitting up because you have more room for your lungs to expand. So, in yoga, I can't sit in Indian style. Some people can. Or crisscross applesauce. This is as far as I can go. It's amazing what you can do when you focus on your breathing. While we're exercising, you can get into hyperventilating and stuff like that. But breathing control helps oxygenate your muscles, work the lactic acid out of there, and actually help your diaphragm and your lungs to get more oxygen into your bloodstream and to be more efficient when it comes to utilizing that oxygen for energy. So, Afterwards, it's important to get that breathing control. Obviously, stretching out is also a gr very great thing to do. You can do the same things we started out with. Your normal arm crosses. Your behind the, the butt and the head stuff. Your knee pulls. I personally like to vary it up. And I'll show you a few, extra, few stretches I'll do right now for post-exercise. Before, we did toe touches and knee hugs for the legs. I'm gonna do lunges. The important thing here, make sure your feet are parallel to each other and the side you lean on, your back stays flat or straight, I should say. I'm bending at the hips. My back is straight. I can't stand straight up because of how the legs position it, but I can do this. My back is straight and I'm making eye contact with you. You feel the stretch right here. Can flip, make sure it does the same thing. Again, keep your back straight, make sure your knee does not go past your toes. That's really bad for your knee. Put arm hang, get that stretch right here. Since we hit quads, again, make sure you point your toe towards your shin. When you pull these back, keep your back straight. This again protects your knee, and you don't want to pull this sideways, straight to your butt the cheek that the leg belongs to. So my left leg goes to my left cheek. And if you can balance, recommend it. Same thing, the other leg. Make sure you flex that ankle, toes towards shin, and pull it to the right butt cheek if it's your right leg, left butt cheek if it's your left leg. You'll feel the stretch in your quad. If you've had knee surgery, you might feel a little bit of tension in your actual knee itself. I also like doing shoulder circles, stuff like that before workouts. But again, find what works for you. And also, hydrate. Make sure immediately after exercise, you get that water in your body and some protein. So to show you what I get, give me one second, I gotta walk to my fridge. Some people make little post protein shakes with whey protein and different stuff like that, soy proteins. This is not sponsored, but I get a high protein nutrition shake to have Ensure right now. And I just get that in my system sooner rather than later. So my body can use that protein to fix the muscles that you damage when you work out. Because you actually damage your muscle fibers when you work out. And the reason that's important to note is that's how you make gains. It causes your body to adapt. It's not a bad thing unless you overdo it. Um, there's this thing called delayed onset muscle soreness that's after workouts when you start feeling really sore. That's what they mean. DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. This was the first workout I'm gonna show you guys. I wrote up a few more and some different exercises, but 
We'll talk about those the next time I do another video like this. Maybe I'll be wearing the same clothes, maybe I won't. But more than likely, it'll be in the same place unless I go outside. Make sure you guys are taking some healthy, getting a healthy amount of uh, out, outdoors life, getting that sunlight, getting your vitamins, and eating properly. If you're looking to lose weight, there's only one thing you should really be paying attention to, and that's calories in versus calories out. Calories in, how much you're consuming, and how much your body is actually putting out in calories throughout the day and in your workouts. So, if you want to lose weight, cut fat, you need to eat less calories, consume less calories, than you burn in a day. And that's every day. That's the simplest way to put it, but I always advise eating healthy, eating your vegetables, avoiding high sugar content, and anything that your body doesn't necessarily agree with. But here's the first of the mini workout videos I owe you guys. Maybe this will be combined with another workout. We'll see, but hey, I had fun and I hope you found this informative and maybe helps you get up and get exercising and, and do things that are positive for your body despite the fact they were all social distancing and you know, have limited things that we can do. These are simple body weight exercises you can do at home. It's pretty easy, pretty cheap, and uh, that's gonna do it. So remember, stay safe, stay wonderful, and I appreciate you. And um, well, there's only one you, and you're a gift to this world. You have something nobody else has. Show the world, pursue your dreams, and be yourself. Smile always, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Oh, that stuff's delicious. A man that really reduces that recovery time. Oh. Oh, look, it's me crotch, super close.